Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com, your purchase and pricing email question line. For buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform, please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for price details. Today, we are discussing a watch launched in approximately 2005 based on a complication that Audemars Piguet introduced to the wristwatch market in the year 2000. This is the Audemars Piguet Jules Audemars equation of time with sunrise and sunset programmed for Los Angeles. There's a lot going on here. Moon phase, perpetual calendar, sunrise, sunset, and equation of time. We'll break it all down, but first, the size. In rose gold, this watch is 43 millimeters in diameter by 11.7 millimeters thick. From lug tip to lug tip, it measures 49.7 millimeters with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. On my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see the watch is a good fit. Though I don't have a lot of clearance from the edge of the lug to the edge of my wrist, I would say the smallest wrist that would wear this watch is probably gonna be about 15 centimeters circumference. Any smaller, and you're gonna need a smaller watch. The timepiece is flat. You'll see it under 12 millimeters thick with a domed case flank. It does easily fit underneath the cuff. So it is a large dress watch, but it will play the part of a dress watch and disappear when needed under a sleeve. The strap, as you can see, is large rectangular scale alligator leather in black with a monotone stitch up on the top. It has a broad folded edge. It's calf skin on the bottom. You can see that Audemars Piguet uses curved spring bars, so the strap can be very close to the case and the lugs can be drilled very close to the case, but there's no impediment to the motion of the strap. That's because of the curved bars. And you can see this is a Audemars Piguet factory strap in brand new condition, semi-gloss black finish. We have an Audemars Piguet single fold deployant clasp here in rose gold. It is the logo style with the AP swing arm system. Then we jump to the case, which is common across many Jules Audemars models. But what I like in particular is just how handmade this case is. You can really see that the lug was inserted into a slot in the case and then welded on. And then the evidence of the weld, all the excess metal was removed to create the sharp break you see here. This is a very old school and laborious way of making a case. Generally today, they're just machined or stamped. So to see this welded lug construction, very impressive. The watch is as impressively handmade externally as it is internally. Now we have contrasting satin finish. It's vertical on the lug flanks, but then it's longitudinal across the case band. You can see that the bezel as well as the Lug hoods are polished. We have an AP logo on the crown, several pusher adjusters on the case flank for correcting the calendar, and an awful lot going on on the dial side. First, let's start from the outside and work our way in. We have Los Angeles, and by programming in the latitude of Los Angeles, Audemars Piguet is able to fit this watch with a equation of sunrise and sunset giving you the day-to-day -day projected sunrise and sunset times for Los Angeles. So that is geographically proximate. What is not is everything else on the dial. The equation of time is good wherever you are. It's mean solar time versus true noon. So basically the average time for your entire time zones, it's a compromise because the sun is not directly overhead at 12 noon indicated in every part of any given time zone. So the mean of the sun through that time zone over an hour becomes mean solar time. Now, literal solar noon is when the sun is directly overhead. So the difference between noon indicated on your watch and noon as described by the sun directly overhead that can vary by up to negative 15 and plus 15 minutes per day. These two events can be 15 minutes apart, and four times each year they will coincide so they're exactly the same. That's why we have this negative 15 to plus 15 scale, and then there's a little sun hand that indicates the equation of time. We also have a perpetual calendar. As you can see, there's a little moon phase with a correction interval of 122 years, and then a perpetual calendar that doesn't need to be corrected until the year 2100. So we've got the moon phase, we've got the month, we've got a co axial display that shows you the day and the date. And then a guilloche pattern around the center, all hands as well as numerals are rose gold. You can also see the dial has outstanding depth. Turn it all over. 
It's based on the Audemars Piguet caliber 2120, which is distantly based on the 1967 Jaeger LeCoultre 920 a Bausch, which was developed specifically for AP, Vacheron, and Patek, and only ever used by those three companies. Now, in the modern era, Audemars Piguet builds and finishes this movement in-house, and this is a Baroque level of finish, starting with the rotor, which you can see has been hand-skeletonized and then freehand engraved. It's a very impressive construction with the A and the P logos, you could see the sharp inward angles where bevels meet within the evacuated skeletonized portion of the rotor, and then this lovely sort of banknote scrolling, as well as freehand engraved corporate name, note of adjustment to five positions, hot, cold, isochronism, and 41 joules. All of this, right down to the beveling on the edge, the mirror shine of that bevel is extravagantly handcrafted. The artisans who created these Rotors generally just did that all day long. A very specialized art to be able to skeletonize, engrave, and then inwardly finish those bevels. Now you can see that there's a ring that runs all the way around the movement. That's made of beryllium, and it sits on four ruby rollers, one at each corner of the watch. So one, two, three, four. The idea here is by creating a full circular rotor and then putting the mass on one side, you can really sink the rotor close to the winding bridge and the barrel bridge and very close to the base plate. Thanks to the ruby roller bearing and this full annular ring, uh, no shock will cause the rotor to come into contact with the bridges or plates. So the base movement is only 2.4 millimeters thick, and that was the original point of this movement, a ultra-thin movement using the best technology available in 1967. Now, the other thing that's special about this movement is that it's finished to a standard you don't get on other AP calibers, such as the mass-produced 3120 the 3126 in an offshore, or the more recent 4401 and 4302s. You can see that the beveling here is real mirrored, rounded, and hand-finished. The rotor, again, extravagantly executed. The Cote de Genève, incredibly deep, gradiated. That is, there's a light to dark sweep from side to side, and luminous. Uh, they have lovely black polished screw heads doing business here. As you can see, they're black polished on their top with chamfered slots and circumference. The crown wheel is black polished. The crown wheel core features solarization. The ratchet wheel features solarization. You can see the click is black polished. And then we have engine turning all across the base plate with satination on the wheels. A very good looking. All of this water resistant to 30 meters, so splash only. Tech specs. The movement's a unidirectional winder with a 40 hour power reserve. It pivots on 41 joules. It beats away at a very vintagey late 60s through mid 70s rate of 19,800 vibrations per hour. You can see one of the improvements Audemars Piguet made to the movement is that they replaced the mobile stud index with a free sprung uh, index and a gyromax style balance with variable inertia bolts for making all the adjustments. It's more shock tolerant and allows more precise adjustment. The timepiece is gorgeous and chock-a-block with features. It helps if you are in Los Angeles, the sunrise and sunset will work, or if you have an emotional attachment to Los Angeles and you want to know when the sun is rising and setting in your favorite city. That said, the watch looks good no matter where you go. The perpetual calendar, the moon phase, and the equation of time are not geographically proximate and will always be correct if you set the watch correctly, no matter where you are. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.